Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. I hope your day and your week are going very well so far. College Football Week 5 is officially here. I have a ton of great picks to go ahead and share with you guys. But first, as always, people, please make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and drop a comment down below. It helps the channel grow, and it really does mean a ton to us. We are on the road to 100,000 subscribers here on the channel. Our goal is to get to 100,000 subscribers before the end of the year. We're just shy of 90,000 at the time of recording. A lot of people keep saying we can't make it there. I think we can, but we're going to need your help if we're going to get there, guys. So if you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button down below. We have a ton of great content here on the channel between NFL, baseball, WNBA, college football, NBA coming up. So much great stuff coming out, the guys, that you're not going to want to miss. And the best part is all of the picks we hand out here on the Guy Boston Sports YouTube channel are 100% free. So make sure to go ahead and hit, the, hit that subscribe button down below. I have a lot of picks, guys. I mean, I mean a lot. I mean a lot. I have 15. I can't even do it on two hands. 15 picks total in this weekend slate. I love the board this week, guys. Of all the videos I've done so far this season, this week's video, I'm not just saying that to get you guys all hyped up. This week's video I'm the most confident about. I love all my picks. I feel really, really great about my picks. We're coming off a little bit of a rough week last week. I don't have the graphic up. Uh, we went 5-7 and seven last week, so not fantastic. But I do think we're due for a really big week here. We've been up and down. It's kind of been wavy so far this year. We went 4-1 and one the first week. And then we went ahead and we had an absolutely horrific week too. We went 3-9, and nine, which kind of tanked our, our overall numbers on the year. But we went 5-3 and three the following, uh, following week, excuse me. And then 5-7 and seven last week. So we've kind of been up and down, up and down. But following that pattern means we're due for a pretty good week this week. And like I said, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass, guys. I got a tingle in my balls regarding this week's game. And no, it's not something I should go see a doctor about. I'm really confident about this week's slate. So let's not waste any time, guys. 15 picks in this weekend's college football slate coming at you right now. We are wasting no time, guys. Here, jumping right into the outlier screen. Shout to Outlier, the best sports betting tool on the market. We do have a special link down below in our description that gives you guys a seven-day free trial to go ahead and check it out for yourself. It's the best sports betting tool on the market. If you watched my videos before, I use Outlier in every single one of my videos. You know what it's all about. If you're new here, if you haven't watched my videos before, it consolidates all the information that you need to make smart sports betting choices and puts it in one very easy, convenient place to go ahead and take a look at. I only give you guys a little taste of what Outlier can provide, but there's so much more to the tool than what I show you guys. And like I said, there's seven seven day free trial. When you use our link down below, you're getting a chance to try it out for yourself with no cost at all. You can't beat that offer. Link down below. Special thank you to Outlier for sponsoring today's video. All right, guys, our first of 15 picks in this weekend slate. And just to be a, a little heads up, guys, I will be putting the chapters in the description down below to make it easy for you guys to go ahead and follow along game by game because I know these videos are always obviously going to be longer where I have all these picks. So it's, it's a lot easier to go ahead and jump from game to game versus having you guys you know try to fast forward to find the game that you like. And just one last little note before I finally shut up and get to the picks. Um, obviously, with 15 picks, I can't spend too much time on every single one. Otherwise, this video is going to be an hour long. We're already three minutes plus in. I haven't even gotten to a pick, so... Apologies for that. Uh, so some picks I'm only going to spend a little bit of time on. Other picks I might spend a little bit more time where I feel like I need to explain some things. So just to let you guys know uh, how this video is going to go. All right, shutting up and getting to the picks. Our first of 15 picks in this weekend slate. We're targeting the Virginia Tech-Miami game Friday night, 7.30 p.m. kickoff. I'm going with the Hurricanes here, minus 18 and a half. We're getting this from minus 123 on DraftKings, minus 125 on FanDuel, and minus 135 on Bet365. As always, guys, please make sure to shop around for the best sportsbook odds available. Look, guys, to put it simply, the Hurricanes are a wagon right now. They're 4-0 overall and 4-0 against the spread so far this season. I don't think that's changing anytime soon. I know the point total is a little bit high here at 18.5, but this is a Virginia Tech team that hasn't been playing their best football of late. They're 2-2 two two overall so far this year, coming off a very disappointing loss uh, versus Rutgers at home. They also lost to Vandy in Week 1 at Vandy uh, in a 7-point game. Their only two wins this year have come against a Marshall team that's so-so and Old Dominion team that's not very good. So, uh, you look at the level of competition, they haven't really beaten anybody that's worth noting, and the losses have been kind of disappointing. Not to say that Vanderbilt or Rutgers are bad programs by any means, but they're not great programs either. And Miami's just been crushing everybody in their path, coming off a massive 50-15 to win over USF. They were 17 points favorites last week as well, covered that line there. They've been crushing every team. They've won every game by a considerable margin, their closest game being that Week 1 matchup versus Florida on the road in the Swamp where they won 41-17. Miami's a legit national championship contender right now. They are a top 11 defense in terms of scoring in college football and the fourth best scoring offense in college football, averaging 52.2 points per game and only giving up 10.2 points. 
points per game. So really impressive. And look at Virginia Tech. They just don't have the offense to keep up here. 75th ranked scoring offense in the nation. 29.5 points per game. And then defensively on the flip side, tied for 65th, 22.8 points per game. Again, not a very good defensive team. Not a very good offensive team. They're a little bit better defensively than they are offensively. I just don't think they have the firepower to keep up with Miami here. And their run defense is atrocious. 105th in the nation, giving up 181 rushing yards per game. Looking at Miami, the 32nd best rushing offense in college football, averaging 200 rushing yards per game. I expect Miami to dominate the ground game here, open up the play action. I think this is a blowout. This Miami team's a wagon. I'm going to keep betting them, honestly, until they prove me wrong. So going Miami here, minus 18.5. All right, next up, guys, we're going, moving on now to the Saturday slate. We have BYU at Baylor, 12 p.m. kickoff. I'm going with the Baylor Bears here, minus three, although they did burn me last week. I had Baylor money line versus Colorado. Really disappointing loss there for the Bears. I'm going to go and ride with them here, minus three, against a BYU team that's coming off a really massive upset victory against Kansas State last week. And really, guys, what I'm doing here is I'm fading BYU, coming off a massive game, a massive upset win over Kansas State. This feels like a little bit of a letdown spot here for BYU. And then going on the flip side, looking at Baylor, a game they should have won against Colorado. They choked that one away and allowed Deion Sanders and the Buffaloes to go ahead and escape with a victory in a game that, again, Baylor should have absolutely won. I think this game is going to be a little bit of a slugfest here. Two really solid defensive teams. Look at Baylor uh, defensively here. Tied for 33rd in the nation in terms of scoring defense, averaging 16.8 points per game. And look at BYU, tied for 18th in the nation, averaging 12.8 points per game. So pretty impressive defensive numbers there in terms of scoring defenses from both of them. Offensively, now BYU is a little bit better than Baylor is, tied for 48th in the nation, and then you look at Baylor tied for 72nd. But neither of these offenses I would call exactly uh, prolific. I expect this to be a really tight game here, guys. And one of the key indicators of why I like this pick, it comes from the public betting percentage. Now, guys, as always, the public betting percentage doesn't paint the entire picture, but it is worth always taking a look at here. And uh, looking at the, at the spread data here, now 65% of all the public tickets are on BYU here plus three. So the public seems to be all over BYU, and why wouldn't they? It feels like a weird line. They're now ranked number 22 in the country according to the AP poll. They just crushed Kansas State last week, who's a pretty good team, top 25 ranked team. And now they're a three-point underdog on the road against a Baylor team that just lost to a Colorado team that's kind of been unimpressive. So all this stuff leads up to what I feel like is kind of a weird line, right? Why is Baylor minus three here? Uh, I just think it's a little bit of a trap line for the public. And the betting percentages kind of paint that picture. Again, 65% of all the tickets are on BYU plus three, but 74% of the money is on Baylor spread. What does that tell us? It tells us the public is high on BYU, but the sharp bettors, the professional bettors, the wise guys seem to be all in on Baylor here, minus three. Again, just 35% of all public tickets are on Baylor, but 74% of the money is on Baylor there in the spread. When those things happen, guys, it's, a little, it's usually a signal to go ahead and ride with the sharp side of... Uh, um, again, it's not a complete science. It doesn't work 100% of the time. The hit rate's not 100%. But majority of the time, when you go ahead and bet with the Sharps, you're going to end up leaving pretty happy. So I do like Baylor here on the Sharp side, minus three. All right, guys, moving on. Our third pick in this weekend's slate, we're targeting the Nebraska-Purdue game, 12 p.m. kickoff. I'm going Nebraska here, minus 10, the team that broke my heart last week. Obviously, that tough loss to Illinois. I still stand by my comment. I think Nebraska football is the most back it's been in the last 25 years. Obviously, I was very high on them last week. They obviously disappointed in that last Friday game versus Illinois. But I'm not wavering. I still believe in this Nebraska team. I believe in Matt Rule. I believe in the Patrick Mahomes lookalike Dylan Riola there. Minus 110 here on DraftKings. Uh, look at the insights provided by Outlier. This is more about Purdue being as bad as they are more than it is. I love, and I love Nebraska here. But I think Purdue makes us an even sweeter match up here. Uh, the Purdue Boilermakers are 2-7, 22.2% uh, hit rate against the spread in their last nine games as an underdog. So uh, the opposite side has a 78% hit rate in their last nine games, the favorite there um, in those spots. So really solid numbers there. Purdue, some really tough losses back-to-back, -back, right? They get blown up by Notre Dame 66-7, and then follow that up with a really tough loss against Oregon State 38-21. This feels kind of teed up here for a nice bounce back spot for Nebraska coming off the Illinois loss, obviously losing a little bit of the momentum there from a team that was obviously trending in the right direction. Then they lose that game. This feels like a nice little bounce back. Hey, let's get back on track game versus a Purdue team that is definitely not as good as Nebraska. So I like Nebraska here a lot with the points here at minus 10. And again, the public betting seems to also paint that picture. 67% of all tickets are on Nebraska spread, but 89% of the money is on Nebraska. So the Sharps and the public seem to be pretty aligned here on this Nebraska line. All right, guys, our fourth pick in this weekend slate, we're targeting the Oklahoma State-Kansas State game, 12 p.m. kickoff on Saturday. We're going with the over here, 55.5 points 
in this matchup. Available on DraftKings minus 109. Also available on multiple other sportsbooks for varying odds. Honestly, I wanted to pick a side in this game, but there really just was no way. I was leaning Kansas State. I still am kind of leaning Kansas State at minus 4.5, but I don't love the point total. Kansas State obviously coming off a really embarrassing loss to BYU last week, like we mentioned earlier with the BYU-Baylor pick. Uh, I like the over here, though. I think is probably the safer play. Again, not only going off of the public betting information, but using the public betting information and the sharp angles to go ahead and paint the picture. 52% of all public bets are on the over, but 84% of the money is on the over. So 48% of the tickets are on the under, but yet just 16% of the money is on the under. When you see those discrepancies, those major differences, that's usually when it's indicating some serious sharp action. And in this case, a lot of sharp action there on the over. But beyond just the public betting information, there is obviously data there. Each of these two teams, uh, 50% hit rate in their last 10 games on these overs uh, the, at this line of 55 and a half, I should say. Uh, you know, each of them 50-50 in their last 10 games, so not really bad numbers at all. I just think on both sides, really solid matchups. When you're looking at it from the Kansas State side, they have obviously the 16th best rushing offense in college football, averaging 240.2 rushing yards per game. Looking at Oklahoma State's defense, tied for 103rd in the nation in rushing yards allowed, giving up 180.2 rushing yards per game. So you have one of the best running offenses in college football, I guess one of the worst running defenses in college football. I like that matchup there for Kansas State. I think Kansas State's offense should be able to do pretty well here against 78th in the nation in scoring. Obviously, that game versus BYU last week kind of brings their numbers down a bit there, but I do like the matchup there. And looking on the flip side here, looking at Oklahoma State's offense, 15th the nation in passing yards, averaging 309.8 passing yards per game. Going up against a Kansas State defense that's 75th in passing yards allowed, 214.2. So, again, on both sides, you see the key advantage for Oklahoma State that should be able to throw all over this Kansas State secondary. So that's honestly the reason why I didn't want to hit the spread here for Kansas State. Their secondary has major issues. We saw that last week against BYU. I think Oklahoma State has the team that can go ahead and take advantage of that matchup. And then on the flip side, Kansas State, we know they have that, that potent rushing attack here. And going up against an Oklahoma State defense that struggles against the run. Again, picking a side here was really difficult because of those weaknesses on both sides. I could see this game flipping either way. One side that I do like, though, is the over uh, overall. I think that we could see some pretty big points here in this Big 12 showdown. So I like the over here. I think it's a safer play if you're looking to bet these games. Again, these defensive teams, they're both okay. I mean, the defense, Oklahoma State, uh, tied for 53rd in scoring defense. Kansas State, tied for 45th. So they're both, you know, middle of the middle of the nation, kind of middle of the pack defenses. Uh, neither of them I would call them necessarily uh, elite per se, although Kansas State's defense going into that BYU game was pretty highly touted. And then obviously they got blown up by BYU, which uh, skewers the numbers a little bit. But Overall, they're both, I'd say, solid defensively, but offensively, they both have some real weaknesses they can go ahead and attack here. So I like the over here at 55 and a half. All right, guys, a third of the way there, our fifth pick in today's slate. We're targeting the Minnesota-Michigan game, 12 p.m. kickoff on Saturday. I'm going with Minnesota. I'm going with the Gophers, the Golden Gophers here, uh, plus 9.5 against Michigan. Look, Michigan obviously coming off a really impressive win there last week against USC, a game that I don't think a lot of people had Michigan in, especially how slow of a start Michigan had got off of. The Texas loss obviously still fresh in everybody's minds. Uh, I definitely I didn't pick a side. I picked obviously a total, which didn't end up working out for me. Uh, but Michigan, look, I, a lot of people now after that USC win, I think their confidence in Michigan is back. I just don't think it's too – I think it's a little too soon to go ahead and say that Michigan's back. Uh, they're clearly now back in college football playoff contention, and I do think Michigan is the side to pick in terms of a money line, but obviously not worth it value-wise here. I just think 9.5 points is a lot here for Michigan to cover for a team that still has clear weaknesses – on the offensive side of the football. They still have a clear quarterback problem here. And this is a solid Minnesota defense for the most part. Now, we can go ahead and talk about who Minnesota has played so far this year, right? You know, they played Iowa last week. Uh, they played Nevada. They played North Carolina week one. I mean, they have, they've had a couple decent games, but nothing really crazy in terms of opponents. Not like Michigan has playing USC and Texas in their first four games. But through four games, Minnesota's defense tied for 15th best in the nation in terms of scoring, uh, giving up just 12.5 points per game. Uh, they have the second best passing defense in the nation, giving up just 99.5 passing yards per game and 56 in the nation in rushing defense 123.8 sorry 123.8 rushing yards allowed per game so again pretty solid defense overall and then looking at Michigan's side tied for 53rd in the nation obviously they played a much tougher schedule uh but you know they have a really solid run defense they're top 10 in the nation I just think we're going to see a very low scoring game here and the total kind of indicates that the total has kind of been going up and down but overall the total right now looks like it's at 35 so a very low total there's also some storm things going on there where there could be some weather involved 
I just with a low total like that, with the the sports books already telling you this is gonna probably be a low scoring game. I just don't see Michigan winning by double digits. Again, I think Minnesota should be able to go. I mean, excuse me, I think Michigan should be able to come out and win the game. I just that nine and a half point total, man. It's too many points. I'm going to go and take Minnesota here with the points at plus 9.5. They've actually covered this line in six of their last 10 games. They had actually covered it in five straight going into, or four straight, excuse me, going into the Iowa game. They obviously got blown out a little bit by Iowa there uh, last week. And obviously, Michigan's better than Iowa, but I just think Michigan, their offense still has a ton of issues. I know they played better last week, big win. It's also kind of a fade spot for them. Obviously, everyone's back on board with Michigan. It adds come some value here to this Minnesota pick. Obviously, had Michigan lost to USC, I don't think you would have seen a 9.5-point spread here. Uh, but I think 9.5 is just way too many points. I don't see this Michigan team covering that big of a total here and what should be a, kind of an ugly, low-scoring game. So give me Minnesota on the points here, plus 9.5. All right, guys, our sixth pick in this weekend slate. We're moving on to the Oklahoma-Auburn game, 3.30 p.m. kickoff. I'm going to Oklahoma here on the money line, minus 125 here on DraftKings. Also available in multiple other sportsbook uh, for varying odds. Look, I'm betting an Oklahoma team that obviously lost last week versus Tennessee. Now, I know in video in the video last week I saw some comments. Obviously, I kind of undersold Tennessee a little bit. I apologize for that. Obviously, a really big win uh, against Oklahoma last week. Uh, but I think it's a good bounce-back game for the Sooners here against an Auburn team that really has been disappointing, I think, so far this season. Auburn is 2-2 two and two overall so far this year. But you look at their two wins, really not all that, all that uh, impressive. Uh, they beat New Mexico 90, uh, 45, not 95. They beat New Mexico 45-19 to 19, uh, on September 14th. And they beat Alabama A&M on, in, in the first game of the season back on August 31st. Those are their two wins. Their other two games were against Arkansas last week where they lose at home and then versus Cal at home again last week. So the two decent opponents that Auburn has so far on their schedule, again, when I say decent, you know, Cal's not this great program. Arkansas's not this, you know, this insanely good program. They're they're solid programs. They're the better competition. But this isn't we're not talking about these top ranked schools and these really fierce teams, right? Those are the kind of equal opponents. Like it's the closest thing towards Oklahoma they played. And both games, pretty embarrassing losses there for the Tigers. I just don't like them in the spot here. Oklahoma's a good bounce back spot for them coming off that Tennessee loss. This is still a really solid ranked program uh, who they've had a pretty decent start to the season, a pretty tough schedule too. They've been battle tested. They played Tennessee, Tulane, Houston. We can ignore the Temple game. Temple's an easy opponent, but still three straight games against pretty tough schools and they came out victorious in two of the three. I like Oklahoma here in a bounce back spot on the road against an Auburn team that has been really disappointing. The only time they've looked impressive is when they're playing Alabama A&M and New Mexico, right? I just don't buy into this Auburn team. Even though they're at home in Death Valley, really tough to, tough place to play, uh, I like uh, the Oklahoma game, Oklahoma team here. Again, top 26 score, uh, scoring defense in the nation. And offensively, they've been kind of weak overall, but I think Oklahoma – They've had a tough schedule. I think they're going to win and bounce back here uh, in a, a matchup versus an Auburn team that, again, very disappointing overall. All right, guys, next up, Notre Dame versus Louisville. Uh, 3.30 p.m. kickoff. I'm going with the Irish here, minus 5.5. Again, got burned a little bit on Notre Dame last week. Uh, we had the minus 27.5, obviously. They won by 25. Uh, so far this year, I bet on Notre Dame. Well, on Notre Dame games, I should say, uh, I am 3-1 and because I bet Northern Illinois week two. I had them week one versus Texas A&M. I had them week three. Yeah, so three and one against the spread for myself personally when betting on Notre Dame games. Not necessarily betting on Notre Dame. Again, I had Northern Illinois in that week where they beat Notre Dame. I didn't have the money line. Unfortunately, I had the spread. Uh, the only game I've gotten wrong so far when betting Notre Dame games was last week. It just missed it by a little bit here. Uh, I just don't like the spot here for Louisville. Um, you know, I think Notre Dame, they should. This is a, still a really good Notre Dame team. Take the Northern Illinois game out of the equation. Yes, it was disappointing. I think that was just more about Notre Dame not taking their opponent seriously more than it was as Notre Dame team has real problems because besides that game, they have been dominant all year long. Obviously, the A&M win, win in week one, uh, and then obviously crushing Purdue and crushing Miami, Ohio each of the last two weeks. And looking at the Louisville side of things, they're coming off a pretty impressive win over Georgia Tech last week, but I just don't think this Louisville team is totally battle-tested in the way that Notre Dame is. Notre Dame, obviously, top 10 scoring defense in the nation. Uh, Louisville, their scoring offense looks pretty impressive, 47.3 points per game. Again, looking at the competition, though, who they played those first two games, really hard to go ahead and take that into consideration. They haven't played a defense anywhere near as tough as Notre Dame's. On the flip side, uh, Notre Dame offense, you know, top 50 in the nation. Again, Louisville's, it's really hard to take anything that Louisville has done uh, really seriously because, again, they haven't played a lot of tough competition besides Georgia Tech. 
This is really the only tough game they've had. Again, impressive win, but nonetheless, I just don't think this Louisville team is battle-tested on the road here at Notre Dame. I think Notre Dame's in a really good spot here to go ahead and win. Again, for a team that wants to be in the college football playoff like Notre Dame, they need to win games like these. They need the style points. They need to make sure they win by more than just a sloppy field goal here. Also a little bit of a revenge spot. Remember last year, uh, this Louisville team kind of burst their bubble, the Sam Hartman season. So I do think Notre Dame will get a little bit of revenge here in this one here. Minus 5.5 seems pretty solid to me. All right, guys, next up we have the Colorado-UCF game, 3.30 p.m. kickoff on Saturday. My first, I actually have two picks coming for, for this game here. My first of two picks, I'm going with the under here at 64 and a half. Uh, we're getting that from minus 108 on DraftKings. Again, available on multiple sports books uh, for varying odds. This feels like an obvious fade spot, a game where a lot of people I think are going to assume is going to go over. I think fading the public and going under here is a smart play. And the sharp side is extremely, a lot of sharp action here on this under 43%, just 43% of all public tickets are on the under, but 90% of the money is on the under. That tells us that the public seems to be riding with the over here, 57% of the bets being on the over, but 90% of the money on the under. The majority of the sharp bettors, the wise guys, the professionals are riding this under. A lot of money on this under here, All even though the public seems to be riding the over. I just think 64 and a half is a lot of points. And the way that I see this game going here is UCF dominates the ground. UCF so far this year has the number one ranked rushing offense in college football, averaging 375 rushing yards per game. Now, again, we have the competition argument to be had here, who UCF has played. They're coming off their last game against TCU. They haven't had exactly the best competition. So take that with a grain of salt, the 375 yards per game average. Take it with a grain of salt there. But UCF has had a bye week. They're coming off a bye week, so they had an extra week of rest, an extra, an extra week to go ahead and prepare for this Colorado game. They are at home here. Uh, and again, this this uh, Colorado defense, not the best, not very good at all, actually. Tied for 70th in the nation, scoring defense 23.5 points per game. Uh, 84th in college football on rushing yards, giving up 150 yards per game. When you compare this potent UCF run attack versus this kind of weak Colorado run defense, I think we're in line here for a really good game for UCF. I think they're going to be able to control the time of possession. They're going to be able to keep the ball out of Shador Sanders' hands here, which is important because UCF's pass defense so far this year has been kind of shaky. That is where obviously where Colorado's strength comes from, and UCF's pass rush has not been super impressive either. So this could be a game where Colorado – I understand why people are riding the over because this could be a game where Colorado could take advantage – of the UCF passing defense, which again has not been fantastic so far this year. But, but I think that UCF will be able to control the ground game here. They're going to be able to run the football. They're going to have their way with Colorado running the football here. I think they're going to be able to take the ball out of Shura Sanders' hand, which is the key, I think, to keeping the total here low. 64.5 is a really high point total here. And the data seems to suggest the under is a good play here. 80% uh, hit rate on this under in the last 10 games for UCF. Again, it's a really high line. Now, the over did hit in UCF's last game, a uh, 64.5. But they had cashed this in eight consecutive games uh, coming into that game versus TCU. And looking at Colorado here, uh, they've cashed the under in four consecutive games going into that Baylor game. Obviously, that went to overtime, which obviously took the nine over uh, that 64.5 point line. But even them, 60% hit right on this under in their last 10 games. So this this 64.5 point line, neither of these teams cashed this pretty consistently. I understand the matchup could lead to some points, and that's what most people, I think, are thinking here. Uh, but I like the under a lot here. I think I'm fading the public here, riding with the Sharps. And I think that UCF will be able to run the football and take the ball out of Colorado's hands. And staying with that line of thinking, guys, my next pick, I'm going UCF here, minus 13.5 points versus Colorado. Look, it's very simple, and this is why Colorado is a pretty easy team to figure out. Uh, Deion Sanders has had 16 games so far as the head coach of Colorado football. He is 6-1 and one in his seven games as a favorite. So when Colorado's favorited, they win straight They win straight up most of the time. They get a 6-1 record as a favorite. However, as an underdog, Colorado 1 and 8 straight up. This is not against the spread, just straight up. They are 1 and 8 straight up as when they're an underdog. The only time they've won in the Deion Sanders era as an underdog was that first game, his first game as the coach of Colorado last year versus TCU. They were underdog in that game. They beat TCU, but remember, they that was TCU coming off of a national championship game appearance. I think people were overinflating how good they still were. They had lost a lot of the key pieces from that team that went to the national title game. So I think that the line shouldn't have been where it was at, but that's the only underdog game that they have won in the Deion Sanders era. Eight consecutive games as an underdog they've lost. I think it'll make it nine straight here. The question is, will, you, will UCF cover the spread? And again, I think they should be able to. This Colorado defense is putrid. 
It's been really, really bad. All right, look at UCF. They're the 14th ranked scoring offense in college football right now. Again, I'm going to say it one more time. They haven't really played a tough, ton of tough competition, uh, but they are averaging nearly 46 points per game. Uh, and again, look at Colorado defense. It's been really, really bad. Really, really, really bad. Uh, 31 points to Baylor. 20. They scored only nine points to Colorado State, but it, it is Colorado State. Let's keep that in mind. Uh, 28 points to Nebraska. 31 points to North. Uh, 26 points, excuse me, um, to North Dakota State. And again, they haven't faced an offense quite like this one. Uh, and again, that run defense for for Colorado not very good. I like UCF a lot here at the minus 13 half. We're buying it a little bit down here to minus 124. Uh, but I think the real line's at like 14 and a half. We're going to take this down uh, to 13 and a half here. I think it's a little bit safer. I think a two touchdown win for UCF is not too crazy to think about again when we consider um you know what we're looking at here with Colorado. Again, the public seems to be with us here. Uh 66% of all tickets are on the, uh, the of the public tickets are on Colorado spread here so the public Obviously, is buying drinking the Dion Kool Aid here. Coming off of back to back wins, they beat Baylor in overtime. They crushed Colorado State. ESPN's been blasting them all over. I think the public's now back on. This is the Colorado thing. They win a couple games. They beat some kind of shaky teams, and then everyone kind of jumps back on the bandwagon. This is what they're doing. 66% of all bets are on Colorado, but 76% of the money is on UCF. So really good spot here. The sharp side is UCF. I like them a lot here. Minus 13 and a half. All right, guys, we're making our way there. Not too many picks left to go. We're going to try and go a little faster here to get through these picks. Our next game, I have two picks coming from this game as well. We have North Carolina at Duke, 4 p.m. kickoff on Saturday. I'm going with UNC Moneyline here, plus 125. Nice little underdog bet here um, on UNC. Again, available in multiple sports books here. UNC has won each of the last five matchups versus Duke, so they've been dominating this rivalry of late Duke now obviously is playing really well this pick to me is all about fading the expectations obviously North Carolina coming off of a utterly disappointing loss to JMU last week 70 to 50 fans were clearing the stadium really embarrassing loss for them prior to that however though they were three and oh and that week one win versus Minnesota again a couple weaker weaker opponents in week two and three but UNC was three and going to that game really embarrassing loss there against JMU, and now they go into this Duke game, a 4-0 Duke team. The public is going to be all over Duke in this game, and I just don't think it's the right side to be on. Listen, Duke's had a solid year. There's no doubt about that, but who have they really played? This is the problem still. I know we're now week five, but it's still early in the year where a lot of these teams haven't been challenged yet. Duke, so far, their most important, impressive win was that Northwestern game in week two, but other than that, they've beaten Elon. They've beaten UConn. I'm from Connecticut. I can tell you, UConn football sucks. They're a little bit better this year, but they still suck ass. And Middle Tennessee State, they haven't played anybody. Their only win is against North, Northwestern. That game went to double overtime, 26-20 win for the Blue Devils. I don't buy this Duke team beating. I think North Carolina is still really good. They had a really bad loss last week. Coming off a blowout loss like they had last week, teams typically, not always, if you're really bad, if you're a Purdue, for example, not to always shit on Purdue here on the show, uh, it's hard to bounce back, but... I think a team like North Carolina, who is 3-0, who is not, I wouldn't call them a great team, but a good team overall. It's a really good bounce back spot here. Plus money. I think if it wasn't for this, they were in the look ahead spot. Go back a couple weeks ago, they were minus 150 on the money line. Obviously, the events of that JMU loss and everything and how Duke's been 4-0. Now it jumps to plus 125 there. Um, I just love them here. The public betting percentage and the Sharps, 70% of the money seems to be on North Carolina. So the Sharps seem to be aligned here. Um, you know, I just think that this is a really good spot to go ahead and fade Duke. I think Duke's due here for a loss. Again, North Carolina has dominated this rivalry of late. Everybody, I think, is going to be riding on Duke here coming off of, um, obviously, North Carolina's embarrassing loss versus James Madison. I think the Tar Heels are going to answer here. I think I think they're going to be fired up. They're going to have to be fired up unless, you know, uh, coaching is then going to be called into question there. But they should be fired up if they're a good coach team, a well-coached team. They should be fired up after that loss to go ahead and bounce back here in a rivalry game. I like North Carolina. I'm going to take the chance here on the money line. And sticking with the same game, I'm actually going to go with the under here at 55 and a half. Now, obviously, this uh, there's not a lot of data to, to help me here out here. Um the only thing that can help me out, honestly, is the fact that Duke's defense, really solid. It's actually ranked 28th in the nation in terms of scoring defense. Uh, and then on the flip side, North Carolina's defense, not so good. Although that 70-point uh, game versus JMU obviously skews their numbers 
fairly high. Prior to that, though, they actually have been playing pretty well. Uh, they gave up 20 points or less in each of their first three games prior to that James Madison disaster. I just don't really trust Duke's offense here. 66 in the nation, the scoring averaging 30.8 points per game. Again, those are going up against teams that are not all that great here. Uh, North Carolina's defense, I do think it's better than what they're showing. That JMU game obviously really skewed the numbers there. Uh, but UNC's offense also tied for 24th in the nation scoring. But again, you have two top 30 offense and defense there. Uh, pretty interesting matchup. I just, I, again, I'm, it's more about me fading uh, what the public thinks here. Again, not a ton of science, and I do apologize for that. There's really not a ton of science uh, behind this. And obviously, even the insiders are telling me that the over typically hits here. But I like the under here. I just think that coming off that game, everybody and their mother are going to be thinking over here, this line, which is at 55 and a half. Obviously, the total for the last North Carolina game against JMU was 120 when you put it all together. And even Duke last week, um, 62 point total versus Middle Tennessee State. So I think a lot of people here are going to be looking at the over, thinking a lot of points. I think that this game will be low scoring. I think it's going to be tight. I think it's going to be kind of ugly. I think Duke's offense is not that great going with North Carolina defense that is better than advertised. Uh, so I like the under here, 55 and a half. For minus 105, two on BetMGM, pretty decent value. All right, guys, we have four picks left in this week's league. Remind me to never do this for any picks again. This is ridiculous. Uh, four picks left. But again, guys, I really do feel confident here. Uh, if you're still watching, comment 30 down below if you're still watching this point in the video. We are very far in, a longer video. I do apologize, but I want to get all these picks out to you guys. So comment 30 if you're a real one and you're still watching this far in. Our next pick here, we got Illinois, Penn State, 7.30 p.m. kickoff. I'm going Penn State, minus 16 and a half. Again, that for FanDuel for minus 128 here. Look, early season Penn State, James Franklin as a double-digit favorite, has like a nearly 60% hit rate against the spread in his career. He cashes these lines consistently. When, you, when he's a double-digit favorite, he delivers here. Illinois obviously coming off a big win against Nebraska last week. I'm just fading it here. I think Penn State's really, really good um, You know, at home against an Illinois team that they've had some success against. Again, last year, they two teams played. But Penn State did cover this line. They beat them 30-13, to 13, although Illinois is definitely a little bit better than they were uh, a year ago. I just really like this Penn State team a lot. I think they are one of the best teams in college football. They're obviously ranked in the top 10 right now. Uh, it's just that James Franklin trend. I'm going to go ahead and ride with it. Again, nearly 60% cover rate when he is a double-digit favorite in his career. That's not even at Penn State. That's also during his time at Vanderbilt. Uh, as well. And the Penn State Nittany Lions are 10 and 3 against the spread in their last 13 games as a favorite. So, again, kind of riding with that point when they're favorites, especially when they're double digit favorites, but even as favorites overall, Penn State 77% cover rate. So, really good numbers there for the Nittany Lions. All right, next up, guys, we got Oklahoma, oh, Oklahoma State, Ohio State versus Michigan State, 7 30 p.m. kickoff. I'm going with the under here at 48 and a half. Michigan State will clearly be the toughest defense that Ohio State has faced so far this season. Ohio State really hasn't been challenged from a defensive standpoint so far this year. They played Marshall. They play, I mean, they really haven't played anybody worth talking about. They've been blowing teams out left and right. Michigan State, 25th-ranked scoring defense in the nation, 14.2 points per game, and a really solid. They're top 30 in both run and pass defenses. So I do think Ohio State should be able to still win this game and put some points on Michigan State, but not like they have been. I think Michigan State should be able to take away the run and force the football into Will Howard's hands, and I, I have question marks about Will Howard at quarterback. He's been solid so far. But I have questions when he faces a defense that's pretty solid. Uh, Michigan State, 80% cover rate on this under in their last 10 games. Ohio State, this line is 50-50. Again, they, they haven't covered this over this under yet this year. The over is cashed in all three games uh, this season for Ohio State. But again, look who they're playing. I think this game should be tight. There's also a storm. There's some weather data coming in there with a hurricane and stuff like that. So I like the matchup here. I think Michigan State's defense should be able to slow Ohio. They're not going to stop Ohio State but should be able to go ahead and slow them down a bit. On the flip side, Michigan State, they're not going to do anything. This Ohio State defense, top five in the nation. Again, they haven't played anybody, but Michigan State's offense, 93rd in the nation, 25.5. So you have a Michigan State offense that's not going to score much, but you also have a Michigan State defense that should be able to slow Ohio State down a little bit here. So I like the under here, 48.5. All right, guys, two picks left. Our 14th pick in this weekend slate. We got, the, obviously, the big game of the week. Uh, we got Georgia, Alabama, 7.30 p.m. kickoff. I'm going Georgia here on the money line, minus 125 on BetMGM, also available FanDuel, DraftKings, Caesars, and Bet365. I got a couple of interesting data points to go ahead and share with you guys. The one that really stuck out to me when doing some research here, uh, overall, since 1990, a top five team has been a home underdog in just 71 instances in the last 34 years. They're 18-53 and 53 straight up. And they're 28, 42, and 1 against the spread. What does that mean? Well, Alabama, obviously, top five ranked team. They're an underdog at home here versus another top five team here in the Georgia Bulldogs. The history tells us it's not a very good spot here when you're a top five underdog 
at home. Uh, that obviously fares well for us. Again, 18-53 and 53 straight up. We obviously have Georgia here on the money line, so the data seems to be really good in our favor. To narrow it down a little bit more, in the last 30 years, only 16 instances where a top five team has been a home underdog versus another top five team. It doesn't happen too often. The last time it happened was in 2020. It actually happened two times a year with Notre Dame and Clemson meeting both times uh, that season uh, in that instance. Uh, but these top five team home dogs against other top five teams are just 4-12 and 12 straight up since 2020. Uh, I'm so, sorry, sent in the last 30 years and 7-9 and nine against the spread. So overall, the point being, when you're a top five home dog, the dad is not really on your side here. And again, Alabama's really solid. I have questions about Jalen Milroe. It's not just a number thing. Obviously, Georgia top three ranked defense in college football. Uh, scoring actually not great, 58th in the nation. Alabama's defense obviously really good. Um, you know, I think Georgia, in terms of who they played, a little maybe a little bit more test than Alabama has been, right? They played Clemson, they played Kentucky. Now, Crimson, Alabama coming off of some, you know, they played Wisconsin, they played USF. I do think that Georgia's had a little bit of a tougher road to getting here than Alabama has. Um, this Georgia team obviously I think is a little bit more battle tested. I trust Carson Beck more than I trust um, Jalen Milrow. I think Milrow, great runner. I still have a lot of questions with him as a passer. And obviously, this is the number one passing defense in college football. So, really interesting spot here. And the public betting percentage here uh, 86% of all bets are on Georgia morning line, 97% of the money on Georgia. So, uh, it seems like the public and the sharps are aligned here. They like Georgia a lot in this matchup. We made it, guys. Our 15th and final pick of this weekend slate. We're looking at Oregon, UCLA, 11 p.m. kickoff. We're going Oregon here, minus 24 and a half. We're getting that from minus 122 on FanDuel here. Uh, Oregon, um, you know, coming off obviously a really big win in their last game versus Oregon State. They did have a bye week last week. So, again, you have this Oregon team coming off a bye week, an extra week of rest. Going up against a UCLA team that's not very good. Now, I did bet against them last week with LSU. Uh, they did cover the spread last week, although they did lose by 17 to LSU. This UCLA team is just not not very good. Not very good. Um, you know, they lost Indiana a couple, two weeks ago really badly, 42-13. to 13. This Oregon team, obviously top 10 ranked team in the nation. They've had an extra week to prepare. Uh, really solid offense. And, again, the public betting percentage uh, seems to be on our side here. I just don't love UCLA in the spot. This team has shown me nothing through the first few weeks to, to tell me uh, that they can handle it. Uh, they Offensively, UCLA 125th in the nation. Um, look at Oregon's defense, 52nd in the nation. So really bad offensive team in UCLA going up against a top 52 defense uh, in Oregon there. And look at the offensive side, tied for 102 in terms of defense. And then you look at Oregon, again, top 50 offense in the nation. So really bad matchup for UCLA. They did cover the spread last week, so you never know. But I think that's more of an LSU problem when it comes to covering the spread. I think Oregon should be able to dominate here and absolutely roll them. Even though it's on the road, I like Oregon a lot here. Off the bye week, a little extra rest to crush UCLA here. So, guys, that does it for me today. Thank you very much, as always, for watching 15 picks. A very long video, uh, but I have a lot of picks I liked, and I didn't want to leave any of them out, guys. So I went ahead and shared everything that I had written down in my notebook with you guys. Uh, thank you very much, as always, for watching. One more time, please make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and drop a comment down below. I will be back next week with another college football picks video, but until then, I hope you're all winners. Have a fantastic week.